Are human beings and their activities destroying the planet? What does science really say about the impact of human beings on the Earth's climate? We'll explore that and more on today's edition of Life Matters. Brian Johnston has been a teacher at every academic level, from adult education and junior college down through high school, junior high, and even fifth and sixth grade. As is so often the case with teachers, he has also coached. Many on the California pro-life team call him the life coach. Today, you'll find out why on Life Matters. Hey, well, thank you for that kind introduction. Welcome back to Life Matters. We talk about the real issues of life. Remember, guard well your heart, for out of it come the real issues of life. And in particular, I'm talking about the life of vulnerable, innocent people, what's commonly called the right to life. That's right, we get that name, that movement's name, from the founding documents of the United States of America that assert that that right to be alive doesn't come from the government. But the government has a duty to ensure these rights. Governments are instituted among men. That's what the founder said. So we're going to talk about the right to life, but from a very different perspective this time. I want you to understand that killing the innocent is being sold to your culture. So yes, it's violating the right to life. And you need to stand for your government doing its job of protecting the right to life of those that can't protect themselves. By the way, I've said this before, the right to life especially applies to those who are vulnerable, who cannot protect themselves. For that reason, governments are instituted among men to protect people who can't protect themselves that are under that government. And so I've said this before, why are babies vulnerable? Why are the elderly and the infirm and the disabled, why are the sick most vulnerable? And why should they be a concern for us? Why should the issue of abortion and infanticide and euthanasia be our topics? Very simple. If you or I, I know for myself, if someone wants to attack me and take my life, I'm going to fight them. <laughs> And I know there's guys out there who just agreed with me. And if someone wants to do that to my family, I am going to fight them. But some people don't have any fight left. Some people, whether they're old or a very young baby, they can't defend themselves. And yet the duty of a just government, their job is to ensure the rights of those who have their right to be alive at risk. So I'm going to talk about an ideology, an idea that's attacking your mind about this. It's very clever. It's insidious. Yet in some ways, this issue we're going to talk about pretends to be about the government's role in protecting life. Yeah, but it's a lie. And the fact is, is again, government is there for one particular purpose. As the founders of your nation said, for this reason, governments are instituted among men to ensure these rights. So I'm going to talk about an issue that the current president of the United States, Joe Biden, says is the sole specific issue facing not only our country, but all of mankind. It's global warming. And we're going to make sure the government is involved with all its might and main. There's many people. Unfortunately, that have been misled. Right now, it is a warm season. And the fact is, it's about policy. We're looking at election year. But the reality, I think it is a warm year, slightly warmer than other years. But I want to talk about actual science. Now, many of you know this, that I actually went to school. <laughs> ah, yep. And sixth grade, I had some great teachers in sixth grade you'll learn a lot about basic science. And so I actually taught school years later, and I had the distinct honor of teaching both fifth and sixth grade. There's an old saying among teachers, you never truly learn until you have to teach. So I taught basic earth science and basic science astronomy. It's very early astronomy in sixth grade, but the fact that there's planets, and that there's many stars, 
and you teach them the basic facts of what we've learned about science and astronomy. And then, of course, I, yeah, I went to school, and so did you. So if you went to sixth grade, this will make sense to you. And if you went to college and studied astronomy in particular, not just solar astronomy, but the astronomy of all of the stars and their own planets, there's something you'll remember, I hope, and that is that the single greatest influence on this planet is our star called the sun. And not only that, every planet throughout the entire known universe, observable universe, and how many stars are there? I believe, <laughs> quoting Carl Sagan, billions and billions of stars. And they have planets. The single greatest influence on those planets' temperature, climate, and climate change is the relationship with their own star. That is the issue at hand. And I'm going to talk today, because uh, today I am in Sacramento, California. It's 110 degrees. Pretty hot. It's been this hot before. And for some reason, it seems like it might even be a little bit hotter this summer. This is a hotter summer. But you've been through different summers. I want to talk about the sun. And I want to talk also on a number of levels why understanding astronomy is how you're going to understand what's going on on Earth. Because the sun is the single greatest influence on Earth's temperature. Yes, even day to day. It's climate. Yes, it's long-term climate. And there's many evidences in history. I'm going to talk about that in specific so that you understand that no, this is not man-made global warming. This is scientifically speaking an aspect of the sun. I'm in Sacramento, and do you know that three weeks ago, you were able in Sacramento, California, which is at the 36th parallel on the planet, you could see the aurora borealis at night. Typically, you cannot see that unless you're towards the Arctic Circle. But no, something's happened with the sun. Solar flares were allowing the aurora borealis to be viewed on much more of the Earth's surface. The solar flares were impacting the relationship with the Earth. Those flares do reach planet Earth. Do you recall that? Have you been following the news? But there's so much more that proves that man-made global warming is a falsehood. It's false science. And when they say man-made, you know this culturally. What's implied, well, man-made, the problem is overpopulation. There's too many human beings, and they're using all these resources, and that's a real problem. Why do I say that? Because if the UN is asserting that, falsely, and these assertions about the problems of overpopulation, that is a predicate for justifying eliminating human beings. Let's reduce the population. Let's make sure you don't reproduce. Let's make sure that any children you might have, well, if they're still in the womb and vulnerable, let's just snuff them. We're saving the planet after all. The planet must be saved. But what's influencing the planetary temperature on this planet, and it's the case for every planet, is their sun, their star. That is the greatest influence and, of course, heat source, or the lack of same, the cooling source. If that star fades, those planets and stars do fade. Well, any planets are either going to be absorbed, usually they expand, become, they become red giants, and then they collapse. Well, those planets are gone. What happens on a planet, the single greatest physical influence on any planet is its own star. And this year, we've had incredible solar activity. Other years, that's been the case. We'll go back to science in a little bit. We're going to take a break right now. You weren't expecting this. I'm actually talking about the right to life and lies and ideas that underscore the pro-abortion, anti-population ideology that sweeps through our country and many countries that somehow, if we just reduce population, we should have abortion available because it's going to save the planet. I'm sorry, it's ideologically dishonest. It is the result of what is known as disordered thinking. By the way, I just want to remind you, when we do meet, I am no pro-abortion people. I befriend them. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because they're not my enemies. 
It's the ideas, the evil ideas they've mistakenly adopted that I must help them unwind the confusion in their mind by which they've been taken captive to do evil things. I must help them. And that's our job is to help people understand. And if they have the wrong ideas, the easiest way to, to help them is if you befriend them and to explain why their ideas are wrong. We're going to come back in just a little bit. We're going to go even deeper why what's happening right now is not something new. It's not caused by human beings and what they've done. Human beings are not the problem that government needs to control and fix and reduce. Global warming is not a result of human beings. If you understand that, it'll help you when you talk to your neighbors. It'll help you understand a lot of the media hyperbole about the hot days we're having now or even the colder winters. You'll understand the sun. Yes, the sun is our greatest single influence. We'll be right back. If you'd like more information on the California Pro-Life Council, call us at 800-924-2490. That's 800-924-2490. Or visit us online at californiaprolife.org. Life Matters continues after this. Are you willing to step up to be a lifeguard? We're asking you to consider becoming a Life Matters lifeguard. On Life Matters, we cut to the depths of this cultural battle of ideas that has robbed America of its core values and robbed the innocent of their right to life. Anything you can pledge is appreciated. But if you pledge $19 a month, we will make you part of the Life Matters Lifeguard team, getting you the important tools and dynamic information to help save lives and encourage others in understanding the lurking dangers in today's deadly cross currents of culture. Your pledge helps us with our costs of broadcast. It keeps the full understanding of the right to life going out over our numerous radio stations and also facilitates the important podcast that carries even more programming. Please go to the front page of the Life Matters website and click on the Donate button. Your donation is deeply appreciated. I want to remind you of my book, Evil Twins, Roe and Doe, How the Supreme Court Unleashed Medical Killing. Available on Amazon and wherever fine books are sold. I recommend getting the Kindle version because there's links to all the documenting evidence. This isn't because I say it. This is actually what reality is. Every pro-life and even pro-abortion legal expert admits Roe vs. Wade makes no sense. It's actually Doe v. Bolton that unleashed doctors to kill a baby at any time whenever they want it. You need to find out those facts, and they're documented. And the fact is, is we're not addressing the reality of legalized abortion. We want to help you understand this battle right now. You can get the audio version online. Evil Twins, Roe and Doe, How the Supreme Court Unleashed Medical Killing. You're going to come away from the book with a new understanding of what this battle is actually about. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Okay, well, welcome back. Hey, if you're joining Life Matters, you've tuned in on the radio right now, or you've just tuned into this podcast, you know that on this program today, we are talking about the right to life. But we're talking about very specific ideas that are at war with that premise. But many people don't see those ideas as being at war. And so we're going to help you see that you are in a war right now. Right now, if you don't realize you're in a spiritual war, in a battle of ideas, guess what? You're going to lose. Somebody goes to war and they don't realize, well, that other side wants to kill everything I want. If you don't realize it's a war, guess what? You lose every time. Not just sometimes, every time. You sit down to play a game of chess, that you have to think through chess, by the way, or even checkers. If you don't realize, no, this other person, they want to get the best of me. You're never going to win that checkers game. You're never going to win that chess game. You are in a war where you are, and it's the battle of ideas, and ideas are spiritual things. And if you don't remember that, I have many times reminded you of that, but ideas have spiritual qualities, and your spiritual opponents want to get subtle ideas in your head. Evil can be very subtle. 
And those of you who study the scriptures and are Christians of any kind, I don't care what your denomination is, the fact is, you know, the devil's very subtle. Evil itself and evil ideas don't seem evil at first. So we're talking about man-made global warming and how it's really not the issue they're saying it is. And if you want to go back, again, I talked about sixth grade studies. I was honored to teach sixth grade and other higher levels. I did study astronomy at college, both solar and interstellar astronomy. It's quite fascinating. Lots to learn there, and I'm still learning more. But now, here's the thing. You know that right now, I know, I hope you've read about it, that the sun is, in fact, right now producing more solar flares. And that has an impact. As I said, at the 36th parallel where I live in Sacramento, you can actually see the northern lights, certain, certain nights. And people reported on that. Go back in the news if you didn't hear about it. That's a reality. The sun is acting up right now. And that's our source of warmth. But this has happened many times in the past, in particular back between the years of 985 and 1450 A.D. on the island continent. It's nearly a continent of Greenland. The island continent of Greenland covered in ice right now. People bemoan the melting of ice. Well, that's happened before. And it wasn't caused by what human beings were doing. It was caused by the sun's influence on this planet, which is the only real physical influence on the temperature of the planet. And so that's when the Vikings settled in Greenland. Again, you can go back in history, and I'm getting some of this right now from the History Channel website. You can look it up. The Vikings were very interesting people. And in fact, many Vikings were, were actually converts to Christianity. You may not have known that. Yeah, they were aggressive, and there were many subsets of Viking tribes. We won't get into that. But many of you, if you took history as a kid, you know that Eric the Red was a very famous Viking. And not only did he lead a settlement in Greenland during those years, but he himself had an estate. You wouldn't think of them, but they were actually quite civilized. And he had his own estate in Greenland. And this will sound proper to many of you coal biters. Many of you know that what a coal biter is, is someone who studies Icelandic. That's one language I haven't studied very much, but I have studied German and English. They're both Germanic languages and from the Saxon. And that is the case with Old Icelandic. It is a Saxon language. And Eric the Red, during these hot years in Greenland, not only had an entire settlement that he led, he had his own estate. And it was called Brataleth. Brataleth was the estate of Eric the Red. And you can read more about Eric the Red and the unusual Vikings who lived in very balmy climates in Greenland. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't, in fact, anything that they were doing that caused that melting. It was not man-made melting. It was not man-made heat that caused Greenland to melt. So I agree, there is global warming. And they'll say, your opponents on this will say, oh, you don't believe in global warming. Now, that's, that is what I said. I believe that the sun is the single strongest influence on every planet. And every star influences its planets exactly the same way. I actually believe in science. You want to talk, let's talk about science. This is fun. And talk to them about that. But I do believe in global warming. I just don't believe that there's any evidence we're causing it. We're infinitesimal. We can create dirty air, I agree. That isn't what's causing this. We can create dirty water. Even a child can create dirty water. So I'm not blaming human ability to, to pollute. That's actually a different issue if you're being scientifically correct. It's imprecise to say that it's pollution that's causing the world to get warm. And that's what they're saying. So you must keep them accountable to the words they're saying and the real meaning of those words. So man-made global warming, absolutely false. You can double-check my work, but I think a lot of you have heard about this. And again, if you went to sixth grade, you know about Eric the Red and that he lived in both Greenland and then here on this continent, what was called Vinland, which is way up and they don't do it anymore. But in Vinland, in what is now Canada, Vin means vine. 
and they would grow their grapes in Chile, Canada. And that is where Eric the Red settled when he crossed over to cross the Atlantic. And when he crossed the Atlantic, it was chilly, but not as chilly as some of the icebergs there now. We're gonna talk about more of that when we come back. Life Matters continues after this. You know about our car donation program at California Pro-Life. We use one of the most respected programs in the nation. Go to the California Pro-Life page CaliforniaProLife.org. Scroll to the bottom and click on Donate My Car. It's that easy. Did you know you can also donate any vehicle, boat, motorhome, or even personal property? If you are nearing retirement age, you can also get a tax deduction by earmarking a portion of your upcoming compulsory distributions from your 401k. Just email us for information. California Pro-Life is fighting to equip California Pro-Lifers with understanding and the tools to again protect the unborn and other vulnerable innocents. Thank you for your help in this battle. Go to CaliforniaProLife.org. That's CaliforniaProLife.org for more information. Hi, I'm Kevin Sorbo, and I was very excited when I heard about LifeFest Film Festival. LifeFest is the film festival dedicated to showcasing films that affirm the intrinsic worth of innocent human life and the profound significance of each life. I know one of your prizes is the Capra Award, awarded to that production that best reflects Frank Capra's thematic ideal. One seemingly insignificant person can in fact change the whole world in which he or she lives. That one singular life ends up being of vital importance. I'm so glad to hear that you are cherishing that in this film festival and are committed to artfully and creatively protect the lives of those who can't possibly promote themselves. They are dependent on the love and goodwill of people like you to speak on their behalf. Well done. Find out about the exciting cultural change impacting Hollywood. Go to lifefilmfest.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, CEO of MyPillow. I support this show, and I would like to offer you our biggest discounts for listening. So please go to our website, MyPillow.com, and put in the promo code at the end of this message to get the biggest discounts. Again, thanks for listening, and God bless. And that promo code is LIFE, all caps, L-I-F-E, LIFE. So go to MyPillow, put in the promo code LIFE, and you'll get some wonderful discounts because Mike Lindell believes in you and in Life Matters. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters, your program on the right to life, on the culture that emanates from that very important idea because the whole culture has emanated from that and we enjoy the riches of that culture. We're talking about global warming. So, man-made global warming is demonstrably false. It's not caused by human efforts and population. And that's, you see, that's where they're cutting in. They're giving an intellectually dishonest foundation for overpopulation. We must save the planet. No, that's not the problem. People are not the problem. We've had specific discussions in the past, and we've gone into great depths on the science of what is meant by overpopulation, because some of the most, quote, overpopulated countries on Earth have now become the most successful. So the cause of either their poverty, or oh, poverty is caused by overpopulation. No, poverty is caused by policy. And as I've said earlier, policy is about politics, and they want to control your politics your policies about human beings. So overpopulation is a myth that human beings are a problem and causing problems for the whole planet, a myth. Man-made global warming is a myth. I've demonstrated already that in fact, the sun has influenced this summer, the solar flares this summer have influenced the aurora borealis, which is a direct manifestation of the impact of solar flares on this planet and its atmosphere. And how you can see that all over portions of the earth, you can never see it before. So it's pretty intense this year, I admit. But also the fact that this has happened before in history 
And anyone who's studied actual history, you can be a historical scientist. Because science means you study. That's really what it means. And then you test your ideas. So, as I said, the History Channel documents the history of the Vikings. And a lot of people don't understand the Vikings. They're pretty interesting culture. But more to the point, they quote the journal Geology. In the journal Geology, it actually talks about the temperature change there in Greenland. Caused by what? By the sun. And so you must be ready to exchange these ideas, and most importantly, in your own mind, in the mind of your kids. Your kids are being taught this idea. Every day in the news, it talks about the weather. And you know what? Anybody who talks about the weather that has a political scheme to it, they skew it. This is global warming. Oh, there's hurricanes are terrible. Hurricanes are terrible. And I'm not even denying, hey, there's intense hurricanes. I agree. So global warming is caused by the sun. The sun is right now demonstrating that. Do not believe the ideology of global warming. It is a lie. It's designed to subtly influence your thinking and your children's thinking and your family's thinking and your friend's thinking. It's hot because our sun is hot. And it is getting its influence much closer, much maybe closer than it has before, because we saw the solar flares. We saw the northern lights. The sun is the cause of global warming. Hey, thanks for listening. And again, feel free to contact us. Go to lifematters.life if you're on the radio. Tune in at this time. And we always go in-depth. We want to equip you. Our job is is not just to yammer on and on. We want you to get an understanding of the ideas that are floating around in this battle. You're in a battle. You're being constantly barraged by ideas, even on the radio. I don't want to be part of the bad barrage. I want to equip you with the ability to discern, to have discernment as to what's a good idea and what is misleading you. And we appreciate all of you, those who support as pledgers. Thank you so much. We cannot thank you enough. Thank you for your involvement. We admire you for your involvement and your commitment to apply these principles wherever you are, because life matters. If you have friends who are interested in film or the movie industry, be sure to tell them about Life Fest Film Festival. Held in the heart of the movie industry, Life Fest affirms the most significant aspects of film or any good storytelling, the unique importance of the human experience. Learn more about everything in today's show online at lifematters.life, where you'll find all the resources you need to protect life. Life Matters is a production of the California Pro-Life Council, 